Hi, my name is Pam Carricker, and welcome to week two of Recycle Journal Pages. This week we're going to redirect the voice of the page by giving it new emphasis and new meaning to images that we've used previously, but now we're going to take them a new direction. So get ready, this is a fun week. For week two supplies, um, we're going to use some gesso, and I'm going to just use my same kind of scruffy brush I used to glue the images down. I use that same brush for gesso because both of those are kind of messy and they'll kind of goof up a good brush. So we'll just use an old brush. Um, woodless uh, graphite pencil is what I use. Any kind of graphite pencil will work. And a blending stump, a charcoal pencil. And then um, some oil pastels, and I just grabbed a few colors that I liked with the palette. And I like to use colors that actually match colors in the work, and then I like to pull a few colors that are actually a lot brighter than what's um, on here, and that kind of helps, you know, play with the colors a little bit. But they all kind of go in the same color families as what's on the page from the previous journal pages. So I'm going to put those aside. Now the first thing that I'm going to do to this page is I'm going to block out the journaling that I used previously on um, this particular page or piece that I'm using because I want to add some new um, words to it. So if you have anything on your page that you need to block out, that's kind of one of those things that's a page by page deal. I just take a little gesso um, or paint, depending on you know what color you're working with, and kind of go over it to help that fade. I don't mind if a little of that shows through, but I want to add some new words because this is a new page, and it's going to have a new voice, and I'm going to reuse this, so we'll just white out those words a bit. Now's the time to do some what I call under journaling and that for that I use a graphite pencil because it's not as strong as a pen would be and you can go over it with layers of paint and depending on your des desires for that page you can cover up as much of it as you would like to or leave it visible. Um, so I'm going to do some journaling on the lines on her neck and then um, I think I'm going to leave the lines in the background for some some journaling that we'll be doing later on in the process. So look at your page and kind of this is the part where you pour your feelings out onto the page and you say the things that maybe you might not want to say out loud or that you may not want people to read but they're the things that you feel in your heart and this is the perfect time and place to put those feelings into your work. Now to create depth to the artwork, we're going to use some charcoal and blend it out. And doing this at this stage will allow for shading to be created that's not too overly dark and um, because we're going to be adding some color to the top of it. So what, what I do is determine my light source and I have a perfect light source here because I have a window. So that would mean the light is coming in from this way and going across the page this way. So this side of things would be shaded. And what I do is I just take um, my pencil and I would, be, I would begin to shade around some of the objects, like the wings here. I'll shade right on top of some of the collage material and right on top of the blank parts of the page. It's all good there and just use like sketchy strokes and then take your blending stump and blend those out. And this gives a very soft um, smudged look that begins to give things a, a hand drawn look to them. So what I'm going to do is just make sketchy strokes and blend with the blending stump the charcoal, smudge it out working around the side of things that would be shady from that light source that we've got going over here. 
and you just determine where your light source is coming from and sometimes you won't have something like a window that tells you you just make up you just decide okay my light source is going to be here and I'm going to shade the, the opposite of everything and then I go around all the elements um, that are in the collage work too and and that helps to start giving those depths so you don't just have a copy it starts to look like each of these has been added on separately and that just helps you know lend a new look to the reused materials that we're using and if you were worried about maybe not having enough of your own already done, you know, maybe you're just starting out as an artist or keeping an art journal or, or whatnot. Um, you can also use magazine images and do the same technique with them. And so I would just work my way around the page, adding the charcoal pencil. It doesn't take a lot. A little of this goes a long ways, but it's an important step because it really does help set things into the page and help things start working together. Gives a nice soft smudgy feel. Okay, so you can kind of see how that works. So go around, add all your charcoal shading, and then we'll go to the next step. Now it's time to start adding some color into your page. And I've gathered some oil pastels, some colors that I like that I thought went with the page. And I don't know that I'll use all of them, but I like to, you know, have that option out. And what I do is I, I pick one of the colors and I'll start to add it to spaces that I've already added the charcoal to. And I use my finger to blend these because you have oil in your fingers and they blend better than using a paper stump. The oil in your fingers helps blend them into the page and you can see how easily they blend and it's just a matter of coloring them around and blending them out. And yeah, I like to blend them in really well and they blend right together with the charcoal and they will start to add a cohesive look to your page. The other cool thing that these do is create a resist. So when we go to add our next layer, the gesso, it will resist where the crayon is a bit. Don't be afraid to add it right to the top of your images as well. I like to introduce new color to the images and that's even this green color starts to look kind of cool on her face even though that's not a color I would normally use to you do in a portrait this is an art journal so I like to experiment and add colors I don't normally use and I like to go right over the top of the images with the oil pastel because that starts to give them new life. They start to take on a new look and you start to get you know a different feel from the images than they had in their original um, page that they came from. What you can do is then take another color, a second color, and you can actually go right over the top in some areas and have two colors that blend together which gives a really nice look too. One thing nice about the watercolor paper too is that it has nooks and crannies so it'll hold it'll hold the oil pastel in those nooks and crannies and give it a really pretty look. If you can just see you can see the color coming out and the drama in the page. And it starts to take on a new look. A little fun with it and use some different colors than you would normally use. Okay, so she's starting to take on a new look now and there's color to the page. Okay, so now, now we're getting to the part where we're going to do a little resist. And a resist is simply um, exactly what it says. The paint is going to, uh, the page is going to resist the paint in the areas of the oil pastel. 
Um, we're going to be using gesso for this and what I like to do is just use the lid or some small container get a really wet brush you can see that's got a lot of water in it and pick up a little gesso and it doesn't take much and you make a mix a wash of it of about two parts water to one part paint until you get like a watercolor consistency of the white and then you're going to want to have a rag or a paper towel because if you get too much on one area you may want to wipe it off and you can see how this is resisting do you see how the paint it's not sticking to parts it's exactly what it's supposed to do and then what you can do is just blot off where it didn't resist you can just blot that off and the paint will stick to the places where there is no oil pastel. If you have places like where your journaling is that you want to be a little more hidden, then you use the gesso straight on those places. And remember just to wipe off. You can see where it starts to resist, then you just wipe that off a little. And it'll leave your it'll tie your page together but it will leave that oil pastel there as well. And I go over the whole page with this. Even, um, you know, unless there was something really, really delicate that I didn't want, to, that I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover over too much, like her wing, I want to make sure that I wipe most of that off of that because I don't want, I don't want to completely obscure that. And just add water or the um, gesso as needed More to get needed. coverage. So it's kind of playing back and forth with the two. And I work my way around the page. I don't paint the whole page at one time because I want to have that time um, that I can wipe off as necessary. But I do want to cover the whole page with some amount of gesso. I kind of save her face for last. I don't want a lot on her face because I don't want to lose those details. Okay, and then if you come back and you see any parts like the writing that you want to obscure more, then you just go right over the top. It just so dries, you can see that the whole page starts to become unified and not look like separate pieces of collage. And in order to reemphasize the color that we added before we added the gesso wash, we're going to use the oil pastels again and add hints of them around the page. And on the top of the gesso like this, it gives it a real painterly um, feel. It starts to feel like you've been adding paint on here instead of just um, oil pastel and the, uh, the gesso it starts to take on a painterly look which is really nice and so just go around re-emphasize the the colors again the same colors that you used the last time and add those right back on top and this will finish off week two We're getting some nice color definition, nice new look to the page. All right, that's it for this week, and we will take this page to a new place next week as we begin to reuse some of our supplies that we've used previously and continue giving this page a new voice and a new look.